<laughs> I'll just start off with the classic welcome to the Lame Heart podcast Leah Hart. <laughs> no thank you so much for having me. No absolutely great to have you on I've been loving the music that you've been doing and obviously just released your first EP can't wait to dive into all of that in due course but yeah it's just great obviously to hear more artists coming through in the Irish scene especially as if there's one genre that I would be great on it's pop so it's great to hear more pop artists coming great to hear more I women coming and so I've just been absolutely blaring your music for <laughs> the best part of this year it sounds better when it's blared <laughs> absolutely and I'm actually as I said I'm on my staycation at the moment and I've probably been tormenting my family for the last oh, week with the that. EP <laughs> <laughs> has to be done yeah so you are Leah Hart welcome to Lame Hearth, as I said and I'm trying to think back I always like to think where I first discovered someone when I have them on the podcast so my first mention of you is um, that I present on Radio Rira and they love to obviously push Irish artists and then as soon as Older dropped they were plugging it so I learned about it internally usually it's that I stumble across it on Spotify or my friend told me about it on a night out or something so this was a very different story altogether but I really loved the song and it very much peaked for me I'd say when uh, I was in isolation with Covid in January right, and okay. so I really spent a lot of time just in bed feeling sorry for myself with older blaring in the background and then like <laughs> levitating as well to get my spirits up. <laughs> yes of course <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah so absolutely loved that and I suppose I just want to dive into the fact that it's almost like a fairy tale story when I think about it that you started putting yourself out there in lockdown and then it seems like so quickly you got management you had signed signed you got signed and then you have a song out already. Yeah so yeah exactly like you said um, it was it happened very quickly like when lockdown happened I obviously had so much time on my hands and for like a good few years I'd put off making an Instagram account or a TikTok account for my music because I was just so nervous I was like oh my god people can say whatever they want they can they might like my voice like what if like I'm not good at songwriting or whatever and it was just so many what ifs and um, which is so silly now looking back but when um lockdown hit like I had no excuses I was like right I need to do something productive with my time and um within like a week of lockdown I think I made um an Instagram and a TikTok account and just started posting videos and um, really didn't think much about it I posted a few covers and some originals then as well and yeah within a couple of weeks like I was getting like a good few views on TikTok and really, really nice comments that people were like really interested and related to my lyrics and liked my voice as well, which is so nice to hear. Like, obviously, I was so nervous posting the videos. So every time I kind of posted one and people seemed to like it, it definitely boosted my confidence. And that's why I just kind of kept doing it. Um, And then, yeah, the management that I'm with today um, actually found me one day scrolling through TikTok and um, I've been working with them ever since. And they are the same management that um, Picture This have as well. So when they reached out, I like uh, Brian Whitehead is obviously a, a big name in the music industry as a manager. So mm. I can't believe he's reached out to me because <laughs> like, I knew he was a manager of Picture This. And I have been a massive fan of theirs for a good few years. Um, I saw them when they played the Five Nights of the Three Arena. And mm. yeah, I've always loved their music and looked up to them um, for inspiration and stuff like that. And so, yeah, when he reached out, it was crazy. And then he said that, um, picture this we're actually looking to work with a female artist at the time and um, lucky enough for me and I got I met up with them we got on really well and um, they're such lovely lads and yeah I kind of all went from there so that's like this time last summer so it's kind of the past year then it's just been go 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 non-stop um, but yeah then my EP came out last week and yeah it's kind of all led up to that so yeah it's really exciting. That's crazy and funny that you mentioned the um, five three arena nights because the support act for them, Dagny, she uh, she was on the podcast back in January just after <laughs> just after I got out of just out of isolation. So another friend of picture this joining on the podcast. Yeah, of course. yeah. yeah. And yeah. when you say about your management finding you on TikTok, that's one thing that I've really found about TikTok is that it's insane the amount of new people that you can reach on it compared to other stuff like instagram yeah. or facebook or twitter or any other social platform that's been around for a while because you can put as many hashtags as you want on instagram but you have to hope that it makes it onto that like explore page but on tiktok you could do whatever and it just 
suddenly you've thousands of tens of thousands of people on you that's what took me by surprise so much because I didn't know much about the app I think I, we all kind of only got into it um during lockdown so it was very new to me so I didn't really understand how it all worked like my first few few videos I don't even know what they were I think I've deleted them at this stage because like, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing but um yeah like the fact that you can reach people like all over the world like people comment and they're like oh listening to your song from Australia or here from wherever it's just insane like I, I can't imagine somebody over in Australia having my music on you know that way so um yeah no tiktok is an amazing platform and yeah like you said with instagram and facebook you are like limited to friends of friends and hoping people share it and stuff like that whereas tiktok like although you could have 10 amazing videos one might do really really well and the others don't do as well so yeah it just uh you never really know what's gonna work so you just kind of have to do a bit of trial and error and see uh see what happens but yeah it's such a good platform like i wouldn't be where i am today without it definitely yeah and it's totally crazy how as soon as you kind of like pick some sort of a niche and you start making your content based on that everything suddenly like explodes yeah but at the same time then you could make one video one week and like basically recreate it in a different way the following week and one does insane and one just so bad like it's Mm -hmm. so the um yeah the way it works like really confuses me I think it confuses everyone no one really knows what (laughs) you do but that's why I think that's what keeps it exciting and you know it, like one day you post a video and maybe not much thought has gone into it and then like hundreds of thousands of people are seeing it and you're like oh my god like what yeah. the hell so yeah there's definitely like big excitement around it then as well yeah no that's crazy because I, I started doing the same thing as you I started doing like power intros for radio and so it's the same kind of thing but with different songs IDKY was actually the first song I did oh, <laughs> um, yeah. and that did really well and then the next few did really well and then suddenly they don't well one I doesn't did- the trends go by so quickly so you need to like hit the trends like when they're happening because if you do it a week late your video is not going to do well so you have to really like be on top of it and really watch what's going on as well yeah for sure um and I love how you've been using obviously TikTok since you've got signed and started releasing music and how you use it as a promotional tool and so the first single obviously was older which came out in October that's 10 months ago it seems ages away but also like it just happened as well I know quickest 10 months of my life it's crazy for sure um what like what made you select older as your first song because obviously presumably you would have recorded and written a bunch of songs and then you're kind of like dealer's choice what would you like to put out there as your first impression yeah like I think it was definitely difficult because obviously I'm a I was a new artist no one knew who I was so I definitely wanted to start as a man to go on and obviously pop is what all my music is really based around so I wanted something that was really poppy and um, also not sad um you know and just something that everybody could relate to so I kind of feel like older kind of had all those parts and like I always call older as my baby like it just I don't know it definitely was better place in my heart and when I first heard it completely finished all the production I kind of I think a lot of people like if I played it to friends or um people I work with we all kind of thought there was something special about it so it just felt right um but still like you like I loved it so much but putting out putting it out there to the world is definitely so scary and you never know like how people are going to take it and stuff so um it was only when older started doing really well then that we decided to go with IDKY as the next one because I think you just really need to kind of see if it's working if it's not working we probably would have picked something else as the second song and stuff so it's definitely you just kind of have to play it by ear and see how one goes and then start planning for the next release then as well yeah and how did you sort of go about deciding because I suppose I, I nearly think of like there being two dominant sounds in pop at the moment there's obviously with lockdown it's really pushed this bedroom pop sound which obviously has stemmed to artists like Billie Eilish or Conan Gray or even as far back as like Lord's early stuff yeah so there was obviously a lot of people stuck in their bedroom making that bedroom pop but then on the flip side what's almost nearly kind of swayed a little bit but I feel like it's making a comeback with songs like your own is almost like that big huge studio sound and what made you choose to sort of go in that direction because it nearly it could have been easy to choose the bedroom pop sound and you could have done it very well if you wanted but you sort of went with that like big classic pop sound which obviously I love by the way (laughs) yeah 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 no and I feel like as well like 
feel like IDKY and I'll Get Over It are definitely my biggest pop songs and they are that really like rich studio pop sound and I love that because that's the type of music I listen to but then what I do love about my EP is the fact that like I really wanted to bring out a piano ballad that was really far from like the usual pop Um, it's not really pop at all and uh, that's a million goodbyes and yeah that's that's so different and then also Waiting for the Nights then is quite different as well so I do kind of like that there is a big variety on the EP and it's not just purely like this mass- massive pop sound even though that is what I love and um, so I did try mixed up a little bit um but yeah I don't know I suppose when you just hear the production you know if it's right or if it's wrong and um you know when I heard the final production on both IDKY older and I'll get over it actually as well I just like I loved it and I felt like it felt right so just felt like it was right to kind of keep it like that and yeah that's what we went with <laughs> yeah so from older then I need to take a second and take a deep breath because IDKY this <laughs> M- mf i try not to swear but this mf banger <laughs> when yeah. it dropped it still has me going all summer like something happened as soon as that song dropped that i was uh-huh. pure obsessed with and i can tell you it's almost certified it's competing for my number one on spotify wrapped this year really? oh my god amazing yeah no that was yeah i was just gonna say that was definitely a whole new ball game because i think when older did so well um obviously then idky it was like another step towards the pop direction it's definitely has more to it than older did um but yeah like it just felt like such the right moment we released it in march um and it was definitely like you know that time kind of march april people are getting ready for the summer and i was like i i just want it to be a big summer song and that's why we went with releasing it in march and yeah like it definitely such a feel-good song um on the flip side the lyrics are they're not really really upbeat like they do have a storyline behind them that are like you know you can take them in a kind of sad way as well so I love that as well that there is definitely two sides to the song um but yeah like it's IDKY just hits all the spots like it's just such a such a bop and I just can't freaking wait to play that live like it's gonna be so much fun (laughs) completely and as a graphic designer I'm obsessed with the cover art as well like just I I can just say everything everything about that song I'm just absolutely loving because I remember when older was the only song I played it for a few people I was like oh you should hear this new artist and all that and people liked it but something as soon as I started playing IDKY and it was the weather when people could go back out into the park for the afternoon and people started you know dressing up nicely and being so excited for all of it IDKY just seemed like the perfect song for it yeah I always feel like as well each song is like kind of a different part of me be like the IDKY even the me on the cover, it's like more my fun side, you know, mm-hmm. and like oh, I was a little bit more serious. Um, but yeah, I loved that that picture because it's just like, like I just have my tongue out. I'm like, I don't care. Like I'm having so much fun. <laughs> that really comes across in the song as well. So yeah. Yeah. And you must have had like a, a, de- a huge amount of like, well, I predict that you'd have like a serious amount of like underlying confidence because after the after older came out and knowing that you had this banger in the locker ready to like unleash on the world you must have known it was going to do well yeah we waited like i think older was october and then idk was march so it was a good like what is that six months six month period didn't release another song because older kind of um even from january on kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and i wanted to give that it's room to breathe and do its own thing so that's why we like I did held off for a good while before releasing another one um, and then you just kind of have to get the right time to release the second one so I had that done for like three or four months I decay why fully finished and just sitting on it like oh it's you know it's almost time for it to come out now <laughs> Um, so it was yeah it was so exciting when I did and the same with like the EP as well um, obviously you have all that stuff done so many months in advance so uh, when they finally are out in the world and people can listen to them it's just the best feeling yeah and as you said the EP it's just out to rave reviews and it obviously you had a million goodbyes along the way and two more new songs I'll get over it and waiting for the nights what did you want like the EP to encapsulate when someone listens to it from start to finish I just wanted it to be really me um I wanted it to be relatable and just kind of each kind of capture like a different kind of emotion and a different feeling like I didn't want all five songs to be really poppy um and really upbeat at all I wanted there to be a good variety on it so that's why we went with um a million goodbyes third single because I could have gone with all get over it and it was good there was a debate was it going to be all get over it was it going to be a million goodbyes 
but um, All Good Over It meant it would have been three massive pop songs in a row and I just wanted people to see this other side of me and another side of my voice as well where it is a more serious side and like I want to release like really heartfelt music as well and um, so that's why we went with A Million Goodbyes and yeah like that's obviously a piano ballad there's no harmonies on that it's just one vocal um, and like that's why I think it's really special and it's definitely really special to me and then yeah then the other two then came out uh, just last Friday so yeah I just feel like all over these five songs are just so me like they're kind of every part of me and every part of you know my feelings and I just couldn't pick five songs that describe me better. So that that was the like most important thing for me. Yeah. And obviously it was and it was almost like a shock to the system when A Million Goodbyes came out in a nice way, obviously, because we'd gotten used to the big pop yeah. of IDKY and older. And then to suddenly have everything slowed down and toned back. Um like how was it recording that song and what sort of inspired it in a way? Yeah, like it was just definitely like another side to me. Um, and I also wanted to have like that kind of heartbreak song. Like I feel like that's necessary and their feelings that everybody goes through at some stage in their life. And I want people to listen to the lyrics and like just completely related to stuff that's happening in their own life as well. So yeah, it just like that song definitely was the quickest song to record, I think, because it's so just calm and plain and it's exactly what I like song kind of growing up I used to do like big Adele kind of ballads and stuff growing Mm up and so it just yeah it did feel like very me and yeah but at the same time I had so much fun recording all of them um you know but that one because it's just one vocal and stuff it was definitely um the quickest and the easiest and it just felt so right we didn't have to record a load of vocals for that I just we did a couple takes and it was like yeah like this is just very intimate and yeah it it was great yeah and I feel like it kind of builds back up to the pop in a way that you can almost go from, well, if you were to listen in what in any order, you could go from million goodbyes and then waiting for the nights almost seems like this in-between space okay. where you could easily yeah. do it, like sat at the piano, but you can get up and dance depending on how you feel. Yeah, and that song as well, because of the drums in it, um, like when that chorus comes in, it's actually massive, like, and I feel like you could be listening to it in the car and it is very chilled, but like, I think you can also have a blare in and be like rocking out to it as well. So I love that. And yeah, like that song, when we rehearsed that with my band, like it just playing it live with an actual drummer, like just takes it to a whole new level. So that one live is definitely going to be one of my favorites to play because it's just like, I don't know, it's just so big. Like it's so much fun. But yeah, it is definitely that middle ground of it's not fully pop. It's a little bit kind of rocky. I don't know. It's, it's a bit of everything in that one. But you're predicting it to be kind of like the wild card sucker punch that en- that everyone is like not expecting live. I really think so. And that's only from like playing it live and kind of feeling it. And like, like I remember after the first time we played it um, as a full band together and we were all a bit like, oh my God, I was like, it's like a whole new song almost. Like it's, yeah, it's very powerful live. So. Yeah. And then uh, the last song that we have to speak about is I'll Get Over It. It's, okay. it's. <laughs> It's definitely the sassiest song on the EP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Like, that is my, like, like, I can't, you can't not be happy after listening to that song and feel good about yourself. Like, that's my windows down, absolutely blaring, driving down the M50 or with all my girls, like, just screaming that. That's, that's that song for me, definitely. But uh, it's so much fun. Um, yeah, you and the words are, oh, the lyrics are just so fun to sing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was very surprised by it because last week when I listened to the EP, I decided why don't you do something fun and like make a TikTok of like the first time that you listen to the EP and record your reactions. And like the, when I watched back the faces I was making reacting to I'll Get Over, I realized, no, these are too cringy. I can't put this anywhere. <laughs> I didn't see that video. I was like, I would love to watch that. Don't um, worry, it didn't make it anywhere. <laughs> that You were just surprised, were you? I was very surprised. I was like... I don't know it nearly yeah it really just was like sassy I was it's a sassy that's what I wasn't expecting in a way yeah. and it was it was a it was a good surprise as well yeah but obviously it was nice to have the um the pop sense back um yeah. not back it's it sounds like a, it's I'm making it sound like it died <laughs> 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 which it didn't <laughs> but um 
as obviously as as the thing that I love more than anything else in this world, it was great to have the pop there and to be able to dance to it. And obviously you'd kind of previewed it a bit on TikTok as well. And it's really taken off since the EP was released. Yeah, no, I think people just kind of really relate to it. Like whether you're a girl or a boy, of course, like you have been in that situation where you've been like messed about by somebody and um, obviously the initial feeling is really like not nice. But then you get to a point where you're saying like, I'm going to be absolutely fine. Like, I'm so independent. I've got this. Like, if you don't want me, Grant, find somebody else or don't need anybody at all. You know that way? Um, I think it's like a definitely really powerful song. Like, it's a big statement to say, like, you can do whatever you want to me and I'll get through it and I'll get over it. Um, but yeah, I feel like it just relates to everybody, doesn't it? Like, you, for sure. Yeah. And yeah, I feel like it's just a kind of such an upbeat, happy song. So it's doing really well on TikTok. So I'm delighted. Yeah, it did take me a second because at the start I was thinking, yeah, cool. This is kind of almost the sort of like the building yourself back up it. But I was thinking that sounds a bit crazy to be telling the person that you don't want to hear from or that you're angry with or whatever you're feeling. You're telling them to, you know, kiss my friends, break my heart, do all this. You re- And then after a few lessons, that's when I realized, ah, it's the defiance of it. <laughs> Am I yeah. explaining this song right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, the lyric is that like out to me is, um, your revenge on taste is sweet as mine. Mm-hmm. I love that. Like, that's such a, like, no matter how hard you're going to try, your, your revenge on taste is sweet as mine. Um, I'm like, yes, I love that part. Like, that's such a, that really opens into the chorus then of like this whole, I don't care. Um, I'm strong. I don't need you. Um, and yeah, it can be related to anything, like anybody. So, yeah. So obviously a big thing that, hasn't happened for you so far that it's it's almost like the elephant in the room at this stage is gigging like you've been around for the guts of a year and obviously working for over a year but I didn't realize until you announced a couple of weeks ago that you haven't had your first gig yet and you're going to be playing we are family by kaleidoscope that's that's yeah. crazy to me that's tomorrow actually yeah so I'm so excited but it has been mad like it's it's very rare I think that you release music for like the guts of 10 months and no one's ever heard you live Mm -hmm. and because obviously like playing live definitely also helps build your profile and make people aware of you and stuff and I haven't really had that at all so yeah I'm just so excited like I'm so ready to play this set live and um that's yeah kaleidoscope tomorrow is definitely the first uh the first thing I'll ever play live but it's the first of many like I definitely have so many plans um obviously just trying to work out dates at the moment with everything that's going on in the country but the first chance I have to properly play my own show and I want to play Dublin I want to play Belfast like there's so many places I want to play so it's all just coming and yeah it's really exciting. Any dream venues? Oh my god well I think I can't be from Ireland and say that the three arena is not like one of my biggest dreams to play so 100% like I've seen so many people live there and it's just been amazing so to play that one day would oh my god make me so happy but like I want to tour the UK I want to do Europe of course I want to do America and I've never been to America and going to LA is like my biggest dream ever even my screensaver on my phone is a picture of LA like I just feel (laughs) like I'm like I'm not fully me until I go to LA I feel um so yeah like everywhere I, i like everywhere I can play I want to play all the big venues in America as well would be just amazing so yeah I'm cross my fingers <laughs> <laughs> hopefully within the next year when you're performing tomorrow obviously I said because like because you haven't had a first gig yet who would you or who do you who like are you going to be channeling anyone or is there anyone that was so good live that you're thinking I'm imagining I'm that person on stage well I always say Julie Lipa live like doesn't be anybody like she is Ugh. no but obviously yeah you know she's also a dancer now like she's does like breaks out into dance or whatever so that won't be me tomorrow and um, maybe <laughs> <that'll>... <laughs> um, I don't have enough songs yet for that but um yeah her live is amazing um but I actually I work really closely with, obviously with Ryan and Jimmy from Picture This and I was talking to Ryan and I think a piece of advice he gave me um because you know the first time you go on stage you, it definitely is nerve-wracking and although I'm so excited for tomorrow there is nerves there because I've never seen myself properly play live so I'm like I don't know what's gonna happen like um so I was saying to Ryan oh like you know are you somebody else on stage or you know like what is it like do you become like a new character because in my head I was planning to be like this different character like so different to how I am at home but Ryan just said to me like 
no no like when I'm on stage I'm just the truest form of myself and like where I'm the happiest and that like has stuck with me since the moment he said that because it just takes so much pressure off like I just want to go up there and have fun and be me and like my songs are so me so why would I try and be anybody else so I think yeah I'm just gonna go and have so much fun and see what happens <laughs> who knows <laughs> <laughs> yeah when you're having fun that'll obviously reflect back exactly yeah exactly yeah so quick question i want to ask as well is um a few previous guests i've tried to get you know music recommendations off them so when picture this is friend dagny was on she recommended a swede called veronica maggio who i'd never heard of before but love that and then leisha another great irish pop girl was on and she recommended lennon stella who would you recommend if you were going to play if you're going to imagine that you're spotify radio and you wanted to tell someone if you like leah hart what would you listen to the first person that's coming to my mind is the Irish artist uh, Luce. I oh, very good. Yeah, she um I followed her for the course of probably five years and obviously she's already so big, like she's already doing amazing, but her songwriting and her voice is just sensational. So I definitely say to anybody if you haven't heard of her, one hundred percent uh go and listen. She's amazing. Um yeah, I'm trying to think who else. Um, I definitely listen to like a bit of everything. So I probably have artists in uh, different streams, but like my favorite band ever, they're they're quite big already, but Cavish and the Bottlemen, I'm obsessed with them. Um, I feel like they're all, they are a bit alternative though. So not like too many like people that listen to pop would listen to them, but they're amazing. Um, and at the moment I'm obsessed with Maisie Peters. She's so well known, but she dropped two songs yesterday and they've been on repeat ever since. So those two people are coming to my mind, um, first of all, but there's so many talented people from Ireland as well. Um, like people starting off um, and yeah, there's so many people that, that deserve to be listened to. So there's an endless list. <laughs> yeah, there's so many great things in Ireland. Is there anyone like Irish that you'd love to be working with? Um, I think definitely the way I got to work picture this definitely a massive take off my list. They are um they're definitely like, you know, really high up my list to work with. They're so talented. Um yeah, I'd love to write with um Danny from the Coronas. Um I love Codeline. Um, I actually have, I wrote with Steve a couple of weeks ago, the main singer from Codeline, and he's amazing. He's so talented as well. So that was sensational to be able to do that. Um, I'm trying to think who else, really. Um, there's just so many talented people, like anyone that I had the opportunity to work with, I'd be delighted. Like, I think you just learn so much as you go and writing with different people. You just, yeah, I'm like a sponge. I soak it all, soak it all in. So, um, yeah definitely lots on my list (laughs) so much to come obviously a great to see an ambitious list um and obviously want to see the irish take over the world of course me too (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so yeah so you've the self-titled ep it's out now what would you hope that people take away i think um because like i took so long to put music out um or to put myself out there and stuff like when people text me and they say how did you do it or whatever I'm always like I promise you once you do it once it's really not that as bad so I think like this EP really shows that like you can do it you know that way um and yeah you can just be yourself and people do relate to what you have to say and um yeah I just say go and jam it in the car and have so much fun listening to it please that's all I want and take it into your personal lives and yeah that's yeah that's it really (laughs) have fun I think that should be my uh slogan or something (laughs) that's all I you should get a neon sign for the back of your gig saying have fun this is a fun space yeah exactly be whoever you want to be and have fun like that's it literally great message so it's been a blockbuster year so far and uh, what's to come for the rest of the year and going into 2021 what can you share with us uh lots of new music obviously very top of my list um shows my own shows maybe supporting someone special on show maybe Ooh. supporting a couple people on show um or on what you call it on on stage um i'm getting too excited thinking about it i can't even speak <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah, just um, yeah, continuously release some music, and keep growing, and yeah, it's exciting. There's a lots, lots to come. Absolutely great. Well, obviously, Mila Boykis for joining us on the podcast. I will let you know if IDKY ends up taking the number one spot on the Spotify Wrapped. Oh please, 
Overdoes. But anyways, uh, Mila Lucas. Thank you so much for having me on.